In the 800 years following the Romans' departure, the people of Wales put down deep cultural roots while keeping invaders at bay. As the armies of Gwynedd held back the Vikings, the Saxons and the Normans, life here was reshaped through the Celtic church, literature and law known as Cyfraith Hywelda. But in the mid-13th century, one Prince of Gwynedd, Llywelyn ap Griffith, was proclaimed Prince of Wales by his fellow princes, a status subsequently confirmed in a treaty with the English Crown. But that peace was never to be sustainable. A large fine on Llywelyn, payable to the English Crown, ensured that he could never abide to the terms of the treaty. Edward I's response was audacious and ruthless. His vast mercenary armies invaded and occupied much of Wales, and he commissioned the most advanced castles that the world has ever seen. Edward's castles were built in areas that were easy to defend. With new innovations, such as arrow slits and a double wall design, they were almost impossible to breach. These castles were able to survive in tens on slots and could be resupplied by sea, making sieges expensive and ineffective. Wales was then subject to English laws on property and commerce. Welsh people were banned from holding public office and were punitively taxed to cover the vast expense of the castles. Towns were created around the castles and became another tool of English repression. In spite of all these measures, Edward's reign was subject to constant rebellion, eventually resulting in Oenglindur capturing this very castle. For five years, he held court at Harlech, defying the English and calling men of power to his parliament from every corner of Wales. 